Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwood, the FX Market Insight for Tuesday, the 23rd of July. All right. Now, we've had a pretty uneventful Monday, and actually, I, I actually like that, right? You don't want too much calamity over the weekend. It means there's a lot of geopolitical issues sort of rumbling around. Now, in saying that, there are some uh, still quite a lot ga- quite a lot going on. Uh, core market drivers. Now, we've got the, um, I think it was the end of the vote today for the uh, UK Prime Minister, who's going to be the Prime Minister. Now, Boris Johnson is the, uh, the front runner. Now, a vote for Boris is a vote for a no Brexit deal, right? So just be aware, initially, that may be a negative. But uh, you know what? I think he's going to be pretty aggressive as he goes towards uh, getting some sort of resolution. Now, the China-US trade, this thing is, is the dormant beast out of everything. There's too many other things going on. So the media, right, don't focus on it. So it just sort of drifts behind the curtains as such. This uh, Iran conflict, well, that's another thing that's sort of simmering away, simmering away. And Britain doesn't really know what to do at this stage. But, you know, they're, they're about to vote a new prime minister in. They've got this massive issue, right? So Boris, if he gets put in power or whoever does, may come out with something drastic to, uh, you know, show a bit of sign of strength, etc. And we may see that escalate as we go forward. Right now, to me, we're in a sort of wait and see situation with the markets, right? And that's, uh, if I just scroll back up here on the MyFX Trading Hub, if you're looking across the board, we, we have the US dollar slowly climbing on the alleys. It's not enough to sort of break it higher, but this is against the overall uh, Fed sentiment, which is down, right? Now, out of all the, um, the market movers, with this slight dollar strength, we have seen all the, pretty much all the other hourly charts go sideways, which is basically back in, in the range that could go up or down. The, one, the odd one out is uh, dollar CAD. Okay, we had some wholesale trade figures, and if I just show you these numbers, they were, they were rather terrible, right? So this is a bit of an indication of uh, what's going on behind the scenes in the economy. The forecast was plus 0.5. Came out minus 1.8, dollar CAD shoots through the roof, right? They sell CAD. This is on the back of weak retail sales figures last week, right? So if I just give you a look at the charts, uh, you'll see here that uh, dollar CAD is, is the odd one out in the sense that it did have a, a pretty aggressive move, broke through the uh, resistance line up around sort of closer to 131. Uh, this also goes with oil, right, which is also falling. So that was also going to put upward pressure on dollar CAD. The wholesale trade figures were just the catalyst for the move. Now, do I think this is going to keep going? Well, not really. And that's primarily because the, the rest of the charts here on the CAD don't really line up with uh, a big move, right? So if you look at the uh, overall CAD, here's the hourlies. Yep, it's broken a short-term hourly resistance. Nothing major. But on the dailies, it is starting to trade sideways, but it's down in the middle of nowhere. And the weekly charts are also down at this point. So, you know, really mixed technical picture there on dollar CAD. Now, the other pairs, well, we're just seeing the, uh, the currency sort of drift sideways. We do have the ECB coming up. So I can't expect, or I don't expect, I should say, the euro to sort of shoot to the downside or top side. It may just sort of drift around. Obviously, Brexit's dominating sterling. So we're going to wait and see how that uh, election result comes out. And we're just starting to see the two Antipodeans, which were starting to look like they wanted to rally. Uh, their central bank's uh, sentiment is down. So that move higher is going to be muted. The Kiwi's leading the charge here and drifting lower. Looks like some stop loss has been triggered. And you'd expect that to just lean on the Aussie somewhat as well, um, as it's sort of there is no real good technical levels there. And dollar yen sort of just drifting sideways after that knee jerk reaction last Thursday. Once the US shot down the drone, Williams, and et cetera, et cetera. So basically, we're waiting to see what's going on. Wholesale trade figures, dollar CAD sending that puppy higher. Now, if I just give you a look at the news, this is where you have to understand there's like a convoluted mix of data here. Now, this is the easiest one to understand. Dollar, euro flat as traders await Fed and ECB rate, rate decisions. Fed's next week, the ECB is uh, Thursday. That's going to be obviously very important. I'm expecting something, well, extremely dovish from the ECB. I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of new QE to try and get things moving. Whether they do that ahead of Brexit or not, well, who knows? But uh, the rest of it, you've got Trump dealing with the debt limit. I mean, that thing just will not go away. Britain calling for European naval mission to counter Iran's piracy. You know, I mean, that's just... Uh, they're trying to get more... Um, 
countries involved, right? No one really wants to get involved in a really messy situation. So that's why Britain's trying to call on the European Union. Um, and that's where we are at this point. So dollar CAD hits two week low as investors fret about wholesale trade. The, the economic backdrop of Canada is, is changing quickly with those weak retail sales figures, wholesale trade figures, which aren't top tier, but paint a bit of a picture that things are not all well in the back end of the Canadian economy. So we have to wait and see how that plays out. And obviously, sterling drops as market raises bets on a no Brexit deal. Um, that's because Boris appears to be uh, getting his way at the moment. Now, if I just bring you back over to um, sort of the main dollar, you can sort of see here where the dollar index, it is trading sideways, but we have a potential situation where we could see it break through sort of 97.35. That's when the dollar will kick into gear. Once again, it's against the Fed sentiment. Does it continue to rally hard? Probably not, not against the Fed sentiment. So, what we have got is here, look at the equity markets. This is a sign of where the markets are very nervous. At the moment, they are flat, which tells me the market isn't too concerned about what's going on geopolitically at the moment, and they aren't too concerned about any changes to the Fed. Now, the Fed last Friday changed Williams' comments from Thursday, where they were sort of factoring in a 50 basis point cut. That's now back to 25 basis points. If anything, that's going from a negative to a positive. And that's why the, the equity markets are a little bit subdued, which tells me they are not concerned about the current developments. So when you come into trying to work out where the best opportunity is today, you're really looking for um, the, like some, some sentiment across the board here. Now, the US dollar doesn't have a clear sentiment. It is sort of slowly climbing on the alleys, but not enough to, to give it an upward bias. Uh, the sentiment here is down. And the rest of the currencies you've got a very mixed picture. So what is that? That's a big wait and see. That's why I've got the wait and see. Upcoming events, well, we've got nothing till Thursday, right? So we've got a couple of days to sort of get through here uh, before we start to get into those clear trading opportunities. Now, don't forget, there are a number of um, key things coming out, existing home sales in the US. Um, well, actually, that's, yeah, that's, that's actually today. So that's the main thing, but the catalyst for today's market will be the, the announcement I think it's tomorrow, the UK Prime Minister. And that's where we may start to see Sterling come back into uh, some sort of normality. Because at the moment, it's a bit of a wait and see because of these massive events, the Fed, the ECB, and who's, the, who's going to be running in uh, Britain. They're the big events. And then we'll start to see the currencies uh, sort of shift into gear from there. So at the moment, to me, if you're looking for something, I mean, you're clutching at straws. Kiwi sort of starting to drift lower. I can't actually sort of see exactly what it is. Maybe it's just the currency running out of steam and joining back up with the uh, RBNZ sentiment, which is down, right? So that's where we are for the, at the moment. Everything's just cheering along, chugging along, waiting for that specific directional impact, whether it's a macroeconomic fundamental or a geopolitical event. We have to wait and see how it goes for the moment. All right, guys, that's it from me. I can't do much more than that. Uh, yeah, just hang in there. We'll get some good trading conditions shortly, I'm sure. All right, guys, have a good one. Cheerio.